A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God, or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments, otherwise you shall be instantly cast into the white hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white hot furnace, and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But he replied, I see four men unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies, rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Verbum Domini Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory, glory and praise to God. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise for Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise for Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Johannem. Gloria 
Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will be free? Jesus answered them, amen, amen, I say to you, whoever any, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Verbum Domini. Today, in the first reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, we have a very powerful and dramatic scene. We have King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylonians or the Chaldeans, and he is the one that invaded uh, Judah in 587 and even earlier and had deportations when the largest one uh, they destroyed the temple in 587 and the Jewish captives would return in 537 BC and he led this. So this is speaking of the population in the book of Daniel of their persecution there and their struggle there to cling to their faith. And we hear stories of Daniel. Today we hear his companions uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's their Chaldean names. Their Jewish names are Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So Nebuchadnezzar has you know, great wealth and success, and he wants all to serve you know, their gods in Babylon. So he builds this 100-foot tall image on the plains there. And he tells the people, when you hear the music, all are to fall down and worship. But of course, these devout Jewish men who were known for their wisdom and governance, they were set up as administrators over parts of Babylon and they would not fall down and worship. And Nebuchadnezzar tells them in his arrogance, who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Assyria, Egypt, Syria, and eventually Judah. His architectural achievements were considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. He was an arrogant man who demanded them to worship their pagan gods. So their response was, if our God whom we serve can save us from the white out furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But if not, O king, we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. But if not, just three words describe the faith that we as believers are called to have. That God can deliver us from pain, suffering, and difficulty, from struggle, but according to his mysterious purposes, he might not. You know, he might allow that for some glory. He might allow that to use it in some powerful way in our lives and the lives of others. 
that the quality of faith we are to have is to cling to God in all circumstances. And I think we've all experienced this. We've all had the cross in our life. We experience hardships. I often think of just within my own family, different struggles in life, my grandparents and relatives. I see their witness to faith, of not leaving the faith despite great loss and suffering at times. But if not, you know, if not, if, if we still have to endure these things, we will not walk away from God. We will cling to him in faith. So the guards tied him up, bound him tightly, threw them into the white, house, white hot furnace. And some of the guards died. It was fired up so hot. And they go in and they sing hymns of praise. They're unhurt. They don't even smell smoky when they come out, we're told. And they look in the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, and the others, and they see the three men, and we're told here in a fourth, that looks like a son of God. Some translations use son of man. And this is a title that Jesus will take up for himself in the New Testament. It is a messianic title, the son of man. It can refer to just simply his being a human being, having a human nature, but also it is this messianic title in Daniel. There's a vision of the son of man sitting on the throne, the heavenly throne. And so Jesus is there with them. And Martin Luther King Jr. gave a famous sermon on this. And he, he said, this is the test of faith. And he says, don't ever think you are by yourself, especially you know, when you're in that crucible, when you're in the trials of life, don't ever think that you are by yourself. There's four, four men in the furnace. Jesus is with us, and he's there to strengthen us and to see us through the trials of our life. In the gospel today, <clears throat> Jesus tells us, I think, how to be a disciple, how to persevere with him, I mean, to me, this is an inspirational story, but I, I need help right now with the trials. I need more than inspiration. I need more than a powerful story. I need, the, I need grace. I need to be in communion with God in order to persevere, in order to, to carry the cross. And he, Jesus tells us what we are to do. He says, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. Disciples, you know, that's, that's you know, what we're called to be and, and to cling to Jesus, to have that faith that clings to him. John chapter 6, verse 56, He who eats my flesh, drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. John 5, 38 speaks of his word abiding in us. First John speaks of, you know, tells us to keep his commandments and abide in him. And then he is in them. He abides in us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, yes, we're called to abide, to keep, to remain in his word. And through the gift of his spirit, he is abiding in us. Through faith in that word, through receiving him in the Eucharist, we're incorporated, transformed into his mystical body. You know, that's the ultimate communion remaining in his word. He is the word. And so to have that strength, to have that freedom, to have that interior freedom, not to be overcome by evil, not to give in to sin. He tells us today, if you commit sin, you're a slave to sin. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. That only Jesus Christ is the one mediator, the one liberator, the one who truly destroys, overcomes sin, and frees us from that bondage. These three men in the first reading are held in bondage in Babylon, and yet they have this freedom, this interior freedom. They belong to God. And we too can experience that by remaining in him, by abiding in him. And we're all called to this. We're all called 
to holiness. It's not just for certain chosen few in the church. You know, if we're called to be a disciple, we're called to in the Gospels, he tells us to take up our cross and follow him, that we will have sufferings. But if in our prayer, I think if we renew this communion with Christ, you know, maybe just that simple prayer, if you're really struggling or really suffering, just to repeat those words that Jesus abides in me. Jesus strengthens me. He abides in me and I in him. We have this communion that of my own determination, of my own strength, I can't do it. But through that gift of the Spirit, united with him, I can persevere. You know, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says that, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. That we all have sufferings and difficulties, but he will strengthen us. We're destined for glory. All of us were called to live a heroic faith that, that trusts in the Lord, that contemplates him, that has this communion with him, that we can persevere, take up our cross, and be his disciples.